The images coming out of Gaza do not horrify me. I'm sorry, I kind of expected them after October 7th, that Israel would go after the terrorists aggressively until they are gone. They are trying to avoid civilian casualties, uh, but they will happen in any conflict. America, we've killed a lot of civilians. Even though we try to minimize it, it will happen in war. It is a fact of life. But taking innocent women and children hostage, no, that's truly barbaric. That is so strange, even in warfare. You see what's happening here? Hamas fighters are taking off a woman, taking out a woman out of Israel with her one-year-old baby, actually not even one. That woman and that baby are being held hostage right now, still in Gaza. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Women and children, infants are still in custody. Barbarian Hamas terrorists have these people and they're not letting them go. Yeah, Kafir Bibas just turned one not too long ago. This is insane. And what's even crazier or, well, just totally bizarre, Joe Biden waffling, sending conflicting signals to the world about whose side we're on here. He thinks he's being cute. He thinks he's being clever. What is he doing? I don't think he really knows other than craven political opportunism in Michigan. Take a look. Did you threaten to stop military aid to Israel? I asked them to do what they're doing. Do you think he's cool or something with the big grin and the sunglasses walking off to the helicopter? It is a legitimate question. What is happening between America and our precious dear ally Israel? Well, he's kind of giving us an answer right there, turning America's back on Israel. And it is a total and complete disgrace. And it must change very soon. God bless Israel. Meanwhile, in America, Governor Abbott, he's not playing, you know? I'm not playing, you know, when you mean business. Well, he means business. Uh, a sense of urgency from this governor. Governor Abbott will be joining us in a little bit. You know he's down there in Texas doing everything he has to do to secure the border. It's an uphill fight against the Biden administration. I loved it when he actually confronted Joe Biden at an airport. He said, look, Joe, this is what you got to do. It's very simple. It's on one page. Sign some executive orders and you can secure the United States. Uh, Joe, well, he couldn't tell what to do. He was kind of overwhelmed by the moment, folded it up, put it in his pocket, and uh, did nothing. Governor Greg Abbott is a true hero in all of this. It's crazy that the federal government is allowing this to happen. I know there are federal employees who don't want it to happen. Hey, in the meantime, Texas is standing up, led by Governor Abbott himself. You see this fence? Yeah, this fence is not a federal project. It's a state project in Texas. He has been great. Uh, here's Governor Abbott. In Texas, anyway, uh, we're going to be barricading every area where people are crossing uh, and, until we get every area to have like this area is right now. Texas is going to barricade every area? What do you mean? Every area where the cartels use as a crossing. We intend to be barricading. Texas has the constitutional right to self-defense, and we are going to defend our state and our country from an invasion. Just know this, and that is the National Guard is relentless. On a daily basis, they're adding more razor wire barrier, more anti-climb barrier, uh, more other ways to uh, repel people from trying to enter illegally. I told you he's not playing. Again, Governor Abbott will be here in just a little bit. He's got a little bit of a feud and a rivalry going with somebody who is playing, Eric Adams. Uh, playing grown up, playing like he's the mayor. He does not have a clue. I mean, none. We have a crime crisis in New York City. Uh, it is horrendous. It is something that we haven't seen since the 1970s. Uh, everybody knows it. He's got police officials publicly spinning for him, trying to pretend that what we are seeing is actually not taking place. Uh, yeah, Texas, you've got a serious statesman, and we have a 
clown politician. This is a great city, and I'm the Biden of Brooklyn. I'm a black man, that's the mayor. Every day in the police department, I kick those crackers' ass. Don't stand in front like you treated someone that's on the plantation that you own. Can we please stop saying we're up in crime in our subway system? We are not. We're down in crime in the subway system. And many of them keep saying over and over again as we move through the subway system, they say to me, Eric, can people stop saying we're unsafe down here? It's the best subway system on the globe. <laughs> on the globe. Nobody has ever said that to him. It has not happened. Um, he is mayor because of the media, though. Don't think New York voted for this guy. He got three percent, actually less than three percent of the vote on the last day of school. That's when they had the primary. That's when the election essentially, the last day of school in June. And that's how they get guys like this in. And you know, the media, they actually bought the hype that he was somehow a crime fighter. And where did that hype come from? Him, because he was in the police department, uh, had no reputation, was widely disliked, caused a lot of trouble in the police department. And uh, well, just take it from Eric himself, this is the kind of crime fighter he is. Hi, I'm New York State Senator Eric Adams. And for 22 years, I wore a bulletproof vest and stood on the street corners and protected children and families in the city of New York. I will show you how to search a room to ensure that you remove illegal handguns and other contraband from your home. What I would like to show here is to empower parents on how to search a room inside their home. It's imperative that you should know what's inside your household. All right, you ready to take this lesson? Okay, this is a camp. This is Eric Adams showing us how to protect ourselves. All right, let's let's see more of that law enforcement expertise. So if you come to a room like this, you can start out. I always recommend to start out in a periodic fashion, so you'll be used to going through the room to look at um, the various items in the room. You can look in the jewelry box. A jewelry box of this nature, maybe a simple jewelry box. But if you look through it closely, you don't know what your child may be hiding. For instance. A gun could be hidden. A small caliber weapon could be hidden inside a jewelry box. Look at the ver various colognes and perfumes and photos and pinches. Wow, this, I mean, the FBI, they must be taking notes right now. This is forensics. This is investigation. It's almost like a, I don't know, a spoof video for the Christmas party with the music and everything. But this is, this is, this is, he really thinks this, this is great stuff. Look at picture frames and behind them cameras try to determine what's what's taking place behind a picture frame you can find bullets what does that mean to find bullets does it mean your child is, is carrying a gun no where there's smoke there's possible fire where there's a bullet there's possibly a gun you should engage in the conversation and find out what are they doing doing with the item uh rudy giuliani and now this and now this the joke, unfortunately, isn't on his Christmas uh, party staff there. It's on us. It's on all of New York. And this man happens to be in a lot of trouble, uh, serious trouble. The FBI is, has been investigating him. Uh, the latest thing is free airfare that he may have been taking. This is in addition to the other stuff they've been looking into. Uh, possible illegal campaign donations using straw men. They've already seized his iPhone, his iPad. Uh, but Eric... He seems to be taking it kind of in stride, um, but probably shouldn't be. I think that you've had a lot of mayors that did the waltz. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I do the boogaloo. I salsa. <laughs> you know? Luck with that in prison. I have a feeling that's where he's going. All right, next, please. So it was a, it was a week ago today, that bridge came down. That was so crazy. That bridge coming down in Baltimore. Well, terrible. And uh, the cleanup is underway. And so was the investigation. I mean, how could something like this happen? Uh, Joe Biden showed up uh, in Baltimore Harbor and they had a great big press conference. That's what politicians do. They show up and, and they talk and, and Joe tried to. Today, my administration is announcing the first tranche of dislocated worker grants. Fancy phrase, to, which is dimes. All it is there to make sure it helps create jobs for workers involved in the cleanup of this incident. Additional jobs. Uh, got it. Not really. 
this, not to nitpick, but the press conference was right in front of the bridge and the ship, right behind them. There are three people who have not been recovered. There are three bodies down there and they used it for a photo op. I, couldn't they have that thing in, indoors? Why do we need the view of the bridge? I mean, that is a, a rescue, a recovery mission, whatever, and kind of a grave site at this point. I didn't like it. Uh, and Joe, of course, uh, played the grief card again. To all the families and loved ones who are grieving, I've come here to grieve with you. We all are. It's not the same, but I know a little bit about what it's like to lose a piece of your soul to get that phone call in the middle of the night to say family members of God, I've been there. It's feeling like having a black hole in your chest, like you're being sucked in, unable to breathe. The anger, the pain, the depth of the loss is so profound. Remember they told us he could empathize and this would be the consoler in chief. Never forget that this whole thing has become, I'm sorry for Joe, a political gimmick. And it was very early on in his political career. He actually told a national magazine back in 1974, I have no illusions about why I am such a hot commodity either. I am the youngest man in the Senate and I am also the victim of a tragic fate, which makes me very newsworthy. I don't know, calling yourself a hot commodity as a result of a tragedy, I very distasteful, right? Even if it's true in a weird way, I don't think you say it. You know who is looking at him with a great deal of skepticism that we all feel? Uh, this man, <laughs> Wes Moore, who's a bit of a ham himself. Uh, there was something about the body language between him and Joe and, well, Joe's words that I'm sure he was offended by. Um, Joe took him aside and once again admired Wes Moore. He's the governor of Maryland, if I didn't mention. Admired his... Uh, physicality. Governor's a former army guy too, Mr. President, so it makes it easy to work with. I was trained well. <laughs> yes, sir. This guy's got guns as big as my thigh. <laughs> yeah, Joe's got a thing about uh, little kids and uh, that guy's arms. And you got a hell of a new governor in West Moore, I tell you. <laughs> He's the real deal, and the boy looked like he can still play. <laughs> he got some guns on him. You know, uh, I'm not the most uh, politically correct guy, but I'm sorry. He just, he just called a black man a boy and admired his physicality. I don't think that's right. And Wes Moore, I don't think, thinks it's right either, right? Something about um, uh, body language today, I, whatever. They call him a... A future, what is he? He's a rising star, Wes Moore. And he had to endure some indignity from Joe, but I'm not a fan of his either. All about this bridge, he's everywhere. Um, he's not an engineer. He's not a structural engineer or anything like that. Yeah, he's the governor, but I think that a lot of politicians exploit moments like this. They go on TV as much as they can, all in an attempt to kind of mimic Rudy Giuliani on 9-11, right? But there was a real difference. Rudy, Mayor Giuliani, had true operational control uh, of the police department, fire department, and he also had tremendous law enforcement experience. And by that point, he had been mayor for eight years. He just knew what he was doing, and the whole country understood. 